It's Annette at needlepointers.com. Normally, I bind my quilts, baby quilts, lap quilts, bed quilts, using double fold binding. However, single fold binding is perfect for small quilt projects like wall hangings, mini quilts, and mug rugs. So today's tutorial is on how to make and attach single fold binding to a project. The first step is to square up the quilt project by using a rotary cutter and a quilter's ruler to remove the excess batting and backing along with cutting the corner square at a 90 degree angle. Next, for the single fold binding, one and a quarter inch fabric strips need to be cut, enough to go around the whole quilt. Use our handy binding strip calculator to determine the number of strips to cut. Find a link in the description to the calculator. Take the measurements of the project and input the measurements into the calculator, adding 8 to 12 inches extra for seaming and mitering the corners. Cut the number of one and a quarter inch wide binding strips needed from salvage to selvage. Join the strips together with a diagonal seam. Using an arn, carefully press one quarter inch towards the wrong side on one of the long edges of the binding. As I turn it under, I spray with a little Mary Ellen's Best Press to help maintain a sharp, crisp fold. To apply the binding to the quilt, lay the quilt sandwich face up and flat, smooth out the quilt, and place the unfolded raw edge of the binding strip onto the raw edge of the quilt and begin not in the center but part way down from the center. Begin sewing. Oh, also I wanted to mention you should leave a, a um, 6 to 10 inch tail uh, on the end. Begin to sew remembering to back stitch. Stop sewing a quarter of an inch from the corner. With the needle down, raise the presser foot and pivot the project and sew at a 45 degree angle right into the corner. Back stitch. Remove the project from the sewing machine. Turn the project to the next unsewn side, fold the fabric back, and you see there's like a, a 45 degree angle, then fold it again, lining up it up with the top part. You can pin it if you want, just to make sure that it doesn't move. Place the, it back under the sewing machine, starting at the edge, using a quarter of an inch seam, stitch forward and then back and continue sewing this side. When you get to the next corner, do the same thing. Stop sewing about six to 10 inches from the beginning end, leaving a gap. Remove the quilt project from the sewing machine and take it to the cutting table. To join the two tails, trim the starting end of the binding so that it is halfway between the beginning and the ending of the stitches. Lay 
the starting tail flat and pin it in place. Also place a pin directly on the edge of the binding. Grab the tail of the other end of the binding and we're going to be measuring one and a quarter inch from this pin. With your ruler, place it on the fabric right where the pin is. And then I'm going to use a little marker just to mark so I know where to cut it. Use your scissor and cut right at that mark. Unfold the starting binding end and using a ruler that has a 45 degree angle, we're going to draw a 45 degree line on it as a guide for sewing. Unfold the other end of the binding strip. Now we're going to be sewing them together and I always do it in the same way so that I make sure that um, I don't get confused when I'm sewing them together. So this one I'm going to lay straight across like this and we're going to be ma making like an upside down L. So this one will be placed on the top of that like this. Okay, now I'm going to pin it in a couple places and this process is easier if you have a larger a gap between them. I only had about a six inch gap so it makes it a little difficult. And then what you're going to do is you're going to be sewing on that line and it's like from corner to corner. I'll do that and then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, I sewed it together. Um, before you cut and trim anything, double check to make sure that it will be sewn the right way and also that it is the right length to fill in the gap. Then what you do is you trim it a quarter of an inch you can either go this the sewing machine and press it open, or you can finger press it like this. And then you're going to sew, finish sewing the binding in place with a quarter of an inch seam. On the front are in the binding. It'll make it easier when you fold it to the back. I'm just doing the sides. I'm not doing the corners or anything. I'm just ironing the sides. Next, fold the binding to the back and cover the stitching line that was created when you sewed it from the front. And as you're going along, also miter the corners. Now you can use these sewing clips or you can use pins if you'd like. The corner, you just miter it. There's a 45 degree angle there and then you turn it under and then put a clip to hold it in place. Hand stitch the binding using small, closely spaced blind hem stitches to the quilt back. Choose a matching thread the same color as the binding. Sew with a single thread. Be careful not to stitch through the front of the quilt. I recommend taking three or four extra stitches on the folds of the mitered corners to hold them in place. I finished sewing the binding onto the quilt. That's the front. And
and this is the back. I hope you enjoyed learning how to attach single fold binding to a quilt project. Please like, share, and comment. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future videos. Help us by sharing our videos on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. Visit our website, needlepointers.com, for lots of other quilting projects and tutorials. While you are there, sign up for our weekly newsletter so you won't miss new tutorials. Thank <laughs> you.